Hello world. Today we're talking about DaVinci Resolve's tracking tool. It's super easy to use out of the box. It does an amazing job 90% of the time. And it's probably one of the very best trackers you will find in any video editing software. But do you know everything it can do? Do you know all of the options it provides to help you get the best possible tracking? For a long time, I sure didn't. I just hit that track button and settled for that. And I sure didn't use, or uh, probably just didn't understand, all the power of the tracking tool. So if you want to see a full walkthrough of the power of the tracking tool, then follow along here. Let's just jump right into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so I have a timeline here with a couple of clips that we're going to do some tracking and add some power windows and do some color corrections on. So the first clip here, if I zoom in a little bit and scroll through it, you can see this is an FPV drone flying around this plane. Um, this is my good friend Mick Dale, uh, link in the description. He's an amazing FPV pilot, so he flies around everything, and including stuff like this. But as you can see from the camera here, we have some issues with the teal color cast in the light behind the windows. So we're going to try to make a power window around the windows, track it, and then make some color corrections to that. So the first thing you want to do is just go, quickly go through your clip and find out where would be a good start to add your power window. So good place where you can see a lot of the windows and a lot of the scenes. So I'm going to pick this and I just have an empty note here and go down to your power windows here. And at the top you have your defaults, your presets. That corresponds to the presets you see down here. So I'm going to click on the linear and I'm going to move this up a little bit and reposition it. And um, if you go outside a bit, you're sure to cover everything. And I'm just going to reposition it like this. So I'm not too worried about the tail of the plane since there's no teal in that. And uh, I'm not going to focus on the door right now for this example. So this looks like a good start. So now we need to track this. So in order to do that, we go to the tracker tool and as you can see the tracker tool is by default it will be in clip mode and all the axes like pan, tilt, zoom, rotate and 3D is going to be enabled default. So um, you can see we are on the last frame. So to track we will just need to track backwards and so or reverse. So we're going to click that and see how well of a job it does. And it does pretty good. It loses it a bit here in the end. It doesn't get everything. But overall, a pretty good job and pretty quick. So you can see the tracking data down here in the window. The colors corresponds to the axis on top here. So you can see it starts to do a pan. It starts with a pan and then it kind of fades out and then it kind of stabilizes throughout. So I have a little bit of zoom action and a, quite a bit of pan action action in, in the beginning. Um, so to correct this, we are in the clip mode now. And in order to, if we move something around the window now, it's going to affect the whole clip and we don't want that. We want to affect the frame of these, the beginning of the clip here. So I'm going to select frame and then I'm going to drag out my window, maybe make it a little bit smaller here. And then you can see we have some some issues down here with the pan probably. So we're going to follow along. And by the way, this playhead down here corresponds to the playhead up on top. So wherever you position up here on the top, it will reposition down here. So let's just scroll through and see. Yeah, we lose a bit of the windows that starts to come in effect around here. So let's just drag that out over the edge of the window and the rest looks pretty good. Let's see. Yeah. And then scroll down through to the end and let's see if we get everything in the frame here. Yeah, just about. Yeah, that looks good. Um, so if we want to soften it up a bit, you go back to your clip mode and then you go back to your power window and then you can soften up the edges by dragging the handles 
or you can re-adjust the, the numbers down here and adjust your handles like so or your softness like so. But uh, we don't really need a softness because we're affecting the, the teal color. So let's just drag that back in like so. And then let's find a good place where we can see a lot of the colors. So here, so we need to find the colors so we can go to the U versus set curve. So we, we go down here to the curves and then we select the U versus set curve here. And if we make sure our qualifier is enabled over here, we can qualify the teal color here. Just drag around this and you will see it on your curves down here. And just to make the selection a bit broader, we can drag out the control points like so. And then we're going to drag the saturation out. We're going to drag it down quite a bit. Not that it gets so far that it gets pretty muddy, but you can adjust it a little bit by dragging out the control points. This is the area that is affected by our desaturation here. So something like this. Oh, if I zoom in a little bit here and turn that note on and off, you can see that's a pretty big change we did there. Cool. So since there's no teal in the in the tail of the plane, that's not affecting everything. And that's that's just a quick way of correcting a color and tracking a window. That's by far the most useful um, or the most used um, way of doing tracking. Just a simple window with a simple tracker. But there's other more advanced ways in the tracker. And for that, I'm going to reset this node here. I have a another drone shot. These two cars, if I just play it through, you can see the, the cars here. And you can see there's a bit of a 3D effect on the car here in the front. So let's say I wanted to, to track the car here and I wanted to make some adjustments to the car, maybe change the contrast, maybe make it a bit darker or something. So for that, I'm going to make a new node. I'm going to the power window. And this time I'm going to use the curve tool and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm not being too precise with my selection here. First of all, because this is not a tutorial on making power windows, but also because I'm going to soften this out quite a bit. So I'm on the first frame and I selected the whole car here and like so. As you can see, if we go to the tracker tool, again, 3D will be enabled by default. We are in clip mode and we are on the first frame. So we just go into track forward and see what it does. So you can see also the cloud tracker will be enabled by default. And that just means DaVinci will add all these tracking points to the to the image, or to the object itself. And you can see it loses the back of the car here. It's and the front of the, the wheel here. So let's try again without the 3D perspective on. So we go going back to the first frame. And in order to remove all the tracking data down here, you can go to the three dot menu, click reset track data on the active window and it'll all be cleared out. Now we can deselect the 3D and let's try to track that one more time. Go into track forward and you can see all the tracking points. And yeah, it did a little bit better job, but yeah, not quite as good. We could easily fix that like we did before by going into frame view and readjusting the, the power window. But maybe this is a longer clip and maybe you have a bit more movement and this is not really something you want to get into. That can be extremely time consuming. So we're going to do another way of tracking. So again, we're going to reset the track data. And this time we are going to go into, we change down here from cloud tracker to point tracker. And that enables us, you can see now we have the add point tracker mark down here. So I'm going to zoom into the car here 
And now I can manually set some points I want to make sure DaVinci uses for the track. So I'm going to add a point down here and that will add a blue, blue uh, point on your power window and you can drag that around. So I'm going to the edges of the car and um, finding some places with, with good contrast and just make sure I get, first of all, the, the corners or the outside of the car so I'm sure the window stays within the car and the better the contrast the easier it is for DaVinci to log on to, to your car. So something like that. Let's try it. Let's see how that goes. Zoom out a little bit and we're on the first frame. We're going to track that and yeah so as you see here a much better track. We have the whole car in the window. You can zoom out and now I can add the softening to my power window. So again, make sure you're in the clip mode so you don't just soften one window or one frame. Go back and we're going to soften that up quite a bit. DaVinci loves a lot of softening. So we're going to soften it up like that. Go into the first frame and let's just say, let's remove the window. Because with the window off, it's a very good way to see how much softening you're going to add. So I'm going to bring the offset down a little bit. I'm going to add some contrast and bring the blacks down just a little bit. And now if you tweak the outside softening here, you can see the result. Let me zoom in. You have a much better way of judging where you want the softness to be. You can see if the softness is all the way down here how sharp it is and then you just bring it up to your liking. Let me get back up to full view here or to zoom to fit and then bring up the softness and you can see much easier where the softness should sit. And that's if I turn the window or the correction off and on and off and on, you can see the softness and it's, it's really subtle, the, the adjustments are really subtle and if you didn't know, know it was there, you wouldn't see there was a, a track power window there. So that's the point tracker. Let's move on to another way of tracking. In this image, what's special about this image is you have a front foreground very close to the camera and a background. So you have a parallax, parallax effect between these uh, the countertop here and the cabinets in the background. So let's say I for some reason needed to offset this this right side of the image, bring it down maybe a little bit. <clears throat> so you could take one of the presets here in the power window, and you can set your window. Let's say this this cabinet and this right side here. You wanted to to bring that down so. I'm going to offset and bring it down just a little bit, like so. I'm going to go a little bit extra so you can better see it on YouTube. And if I were to track this, so we're going back to the tracker and we're in the first frame, so we're just going to track forward. See what's happening here. The window is grabbing a hold of the table, the countertop. And everything gets skewed, skewed because of uh, the, the parallax effect. So that's not going to work for us. So we're going back down to the three dot menu here. Reset the track data. And then what you can do instead is if you zoom in a little bit, make the window smaller. So I'm going to make it very small like so. And let's say I'm going to use that for my tracking point and I'm going back to my tracker. Everything is reset. I am tracking forward like so. And it stays in place. And now what I can do is I can readjust the size of my window. So I can make it bigger like that. And position it like I want to, bring it down, 
and bring it outside. And now, if I play forward, it's going to stay in place. Because I just tracked a small sample of the image and I didn't bring uh, tracking data from the countertop in here. That's one way of dealing with parallax effect. Another one is I'm just going to reset this and show you another way. So if you have your window set and you're tracking this, the same situation, you're tracking this part here, you go into the tracker. Now, what you can do is if you're in, in cloud tracker, which it will be by default, you can enable interactive mode down here. And that will show you all the tracking points on the image that DaVinci will use for the tracking. So you can actually remove the points down here. So you go to your selection tool down here and you just click and drag around the points you don't want to use. And then you click the little trash can down here. That will remove the points. And um, maybe the lamp up here is going to affect the track a little bit. So I'm going to remove that as well. And now we track again forwards. So DaVinci will track everything except the points we just deleted. And that means now we get a good track as well. It's not going to use the countertop for tracking. So it gives you a better way of tracking. So there you have it, a walkthrough of the tracking tool in DaVinci Resolve. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button, giving us a like. It really does help us get out there to more people and uh, help us make more content. So I just hope you enjoyed this. Have a great 2023 and happy grading everyone.